Unforgettable feature too. I have always had this orb, marked with a symbol for brotherhood. Brotherhood is one of the three fundamental bonds. Virtues associated with devoting one's body and soul to serving others. How long has it been since I convinced myself that my purpose was to follow orders? How long since I told myself that was my only path, the only moral way for me to live? Now, after seeing that pillar of light, I remember everything. I remember what my friends taught me over the course of countless loops. Yes, senor. Different from us? Because of that, you've got to go. Come on, yes, senor. What are you on about? Everyone's got something they're hiding. H have you seen what I've got on my... Uh, I mean, nothing. Forget I said that, okay? Yeah, I know that feeling. Sometimes it feels like I'm the only one in the whole school who's not amazing at something. But you can't make a team with none catchers. We oddballs gotta figure out our strengths and give the world our best pitch. Mini, I could just grab me was Yeah, he didn't speak at all there. Yeah, I feel you. Between you and me, sometimes I feel like the others don't really get me, you know? I mean, what's so weird about wanting to be the best? That's the whole point of sports! Hey, you aren't alone. Even Taurus, uh, I mean, even I have my weaknesses. I can't be this heroic all the time. But there's no need to spill the beans if you don't want to. Smell when you feel ready, and if you don't, don't. If your yogi doesn't feel like home, you don't have to stay. You're free to choose whichever path you want. Hmm, hey, you know you're always going on about how much you like having rules fall. I was thinking. Huh? Come at me all stone-faced and you say you gotta talk to me about something real serious. Then you pull out that crap? I ain't too all about following school rules. Where do you get off acting like you got some sort of duty to leave? You really don't have a clue, do ya? Here comes those ears, cause I'm gonna lay it down for ya. There's only one reason you ever gotta stick up for your butt in the first place. Cause it makes you feel comfortable, just like having someone tell you what to do. Finally, I remember the advice you gave me, friends. How could I ever have forgotten? It is only thanks to you that I realized the truth. I have been a coward. I deceived myself and was around me. I claimed that attention was my home, just to excuse my imposing my responsibilities onto others. I convinced myself I had nowhere else to go. That was nothing but a shameful lie. Perhaps the memories I was given were not the whole truth, but they were part of the truth, and I accepted that as I made my decision. I could have left Penitentia Academy at any time if I had wanted to. But I chose to stay and resign myself to this place, because I believed that as long as Tokyo was trapped in this endless war, locking myself away here was for the best. However, if the time has come to bring that ceaseless war to an end, then I'll have to decide my own path for myself, of my own volition. I will decide for myself who to follow and what is worth laying down my life for. Alarms blare at Threat Penitentiary Academy, warning adventurers. The soldiers who witnessed Jacob's pillar lights stand slack shot, still dazzled. Yeah! Some choose to run, still dressed in their prisoner uniforms, if they ever called something unimaginably terrifying. Uh, uh. Others choose to huddle shivering in the corners of their cells, touching their mirrors desperately to their chests. Only three left. No matter. Will you lay that? Follow your captain. However, some choose to stay and fight for a penitentiary cabin. 
As individual choice places common consensus, potential collapses into an unprecedented chaos. Good as the Vassanda! Reports are coming in from everywhere! It's all the same. Spontaneous and Samburungi nation and escape prisoners! We have word back from Squad 2. They say intruders are trying to reach the escapees in the uh, underground training facility. Captain, they s say they have engaged. What are your orders? Well, I'll squad 2 hold the line, and we'll bring reinforcements. Squad 1, ready up. You're coming with me. The scoutly poker means in warm, gazing silently into the obscene depths of his mirror as his honor guard files out. He has just been forced to deactivate his own network of memories in order to prevent irreparable damage to Penitentia. The system of Eldorado is supported by two pillars, and one has just collapsed. The first is the sheer belief that war is endless and eternal, and the second is subjection to distorted memories in order to suppress any awareness of the world outside the battlefield. Overlording its occupants with memories so that nothing but war fills their mind is a cornerstone of the system. Uh, turn more, okay. While they apply them in different ways, the three true guilds all regard the memories of the past as inv in invaluable resource. Yeah, we already know that invaders manipulate memories, but I don't know how brutal makers invent memories. Each of them thoroughly scrutinize how they allocate memories. To do otherwise would only undermine their own interests. Instead, they seek to control others by limiting, falsifying, or otherwise monopolizing them. If everyone were to simply remember everything, their control would be lost, as the state of Penitentia Academy now proves. And there's a single reason that drives the soldiers of Penitentia to the battlefield, sent by guilt and desperate for recognition. They believe that no one will approve of them outside of the small patch of grounds within the Academy walls. However, should they become aware of the world outside, the foundation of this society of mutual validation crumble. And now Jacob has shown them that while they may have mem many memories of bloodshed, each and every one of the, the soldiers has just as many memories of kindness, love, and friendship. Well, hopefully more of those memories than the bloodshed reminds. Hey there, Jacob. <laughs> However, none of this comes as a surprise to Scott Lee Puka, where he imprisoned Jacob and Zinmir already aware of what he was capable of. <laughs> To Scott Lee Poco opens his mouth and roars with his laughter. He seems to be enjoying every moment of this chaos. Magnificent, is it not? Might I ask? At long last, my final wish will be granted. <laughs> he really doesn't want chaos. Well, not chaos, he really wants a war between his brother. He has one desire to engage his dear something in the war to end all wars. Yeah. <laughs> While he watched uh, Tokyo be consumed by Bell many times, that desire has never been fulfilled. He never was able to approach his blood because he always stuck it because he has no body. I mean, I don't fully understand why I couldn't just approach up the rock. I mean, I guess he tried to at Ota War. Uh, this is the first time, supposedly because of Solomon's intervention. They say the city has seen countless wars. Wars, they call them! Those fools will hardly know what the meaning of the word is. But there's a main mistake, those petty skirmishes for war. But I will not join in their folly. True war is far more hopeless, far more desperate, and omits no opportunity for salvation. Have they made me so foolish that they do not comprehend such simple truths? Well, although they lack my understanding, perhaps I should be grateful that, that I've found a kindred spirit among them. A face spirit into Scotty Pokespun, General Valor, world representative of Tiernanog. Much like the Scotty Poke, he is most responsible for the banishing of his home world, exile, and in exile himself. Perhaps their similar nature is what made them aware of the vital characteristics of the ideal war, confusion, and chaos and must have no fixed victor or loser. Ugh. War for War's sake, a topic that is sometimes touched upon and just usually to great effect. The pair have joined forces, hoping to turn Tokyo's predetermined sake of conflict into something more worthy of the terms of the term warfare. I wonder how it fares in the southern front. As Catley Poka imagines the kind his war accomplice might be unleashing even now, his mouth curls into a cruel grin. Let's see the damage. Oh, 
Well, you would tumble if you're walking only in one foot. OG, Kita Ward. What? He and Swirl Teller and Penitentiary Academy. During a brief pause in the Warmongers and Rule Mika's phone negotiations. Uh, Eden's Rule Pillar and Penitentiary Academy. Who's Eden's Rule Pillar? Uh, Jacob. Michael receives a report from a rule maker agent undercover in Francesia and is unable to stifle his shock. But they have never even shown themselves in this Tokyo before. Why on earth will they do it now? Michael's mind races as he tries to suppress his rise, only for his guild me to set him reeling a second time. Uh, I don't know what the problem is, but it might have to wait. We have an emergency. See for yourself. My secret like has judged that the South has followed the West in resorting to violence. If that claim had come from anyone else, Michael may have questioned it. Taurus's words are beyond all doubt. I see. Now that I think about it, we should have seen this coming. Ad adopts a frosty expression and continues into an even icier tone. We are well acquainted with the Warmongers and Vader's savagery. We were fools, fools think some civilized dialogue would ever prevail against such barbarians. And it is not long before a similar report makes its way to the warmongers and, and key toward. Impossible! Read it again! There must be some mistake. Tanatomu's aide reads through the report again, but it remains stubbornly unchanged. <laughs> General Balor has clashed with the invaders on the southern front and run roughshod over every go treaty in the process <laughs> are you serious no treat oh my god this is coordinated uh, war uh uh inciting between tuscany poke and Alor. they're really trying to incite something new here outside of the loops those treaties between the street, the street tree guilds cover everything from the treatment of prisoners to the, ca the capturing of portals they aim to facilitate the smooth progress progress of the game and prevent it from ending before it reaches its final stages what are the final stages that they're trying to say They've taken innumerable loops to establish, and they have all been broken in the blink of an eye. Uh, who gave the order to the plug General Balor? Wait, no. I remember. It was the commander. Hmm. Now I see. They have must plan this from the beginning. Tanatomo gnaws compulsively on the end of the closed fan. The Candacerian's eyes are positively glacial. These treaties have not been broken by chance or oversight. General Balor has intentionally forced his foes to this. Now all the rules the three guilds have agreed upon are worth no more than the paper they're written on. And Tiscali Pocus Shugal has finally been revealed. Although perhaps it would be more accurate to say that it has come to focus, as it was never really hidden. He has never made a secret of his desire for an all-consuming bloodbath, the war to end all wars. However, only now is Tan Shumbo coming to the grim realization that while the rest of the Warmongers have approved the Tiscali Pocus vision, they have, may have underestimated it, so... <laughs> he really does want to bring actual war between the three guilds, not just within it. Once the rule makers became a, become aware of the situation, they will likely respond in the same way as the invaders. With the world representative of Aru on their side, they almost certainly know. Uh, A.K.A. a horse. Horse's sacred artifact would learn of the breaches of all the treaties instantly, rendering these negotiations meaningless. Yasuyori, please come in. Come in, Yasuyori. Are you there? Tanatomo decides to refocus. Right now, contacting Yasuyori is a matter of the highest importance. Penitentia is a powder keg waiting for a spark. He needs to be advised of the situation and briefed on their new priorities. <laughs> so, really, it was intentional by Scott Poker to let Jacob and all that for this huge scope. Man, it's bananas. But this would have never happened if they hadn't stuck him. But Yasuyori does not reply. The only answer is the sound of pandemonium, punctuated by gunfire. Dare to get in the lady's way, would you? Thrice wise demon! We got more allies over here. 
Come on, everyone out. We're busting this joint. Suzuka and Sasuya fling open the jail cells to free their comrades, but they soon notice that something is wrong. Damn, doesn't look like they're gonna be back on the street anytime soon. Think the war monger just got to him somehow? The Kabukicho residents trick away, quivering in fear. Tatsukaki said, well, Suzuka scales. say they are to do anything for friends, they're gonna pay for it. What's left of them anyway? If things are this bad here, my kids from the summoners must have had a rough ride as well. What a mess. Shiro Mortori, according in, we've infiltrated the Potential Academy. I need your location as soon as possible. Affirmative. Location data transfer in progress. Transfer complete. You've got it! Thanks, RNT. We'll be with you as quickly as we can. We join forces with the outlaws to break in here. Suzuka and Tetsuya are free prisoners as we speak. Although it seems like they have been through some kind of mental trauma. It might be a while before they can fight again. Whoa! Watch out, you! Uh, no! Moritaka! Ew, wait, what's that? Hey, it's break. Combat routine activated. Werewolf warfare. Target sneakized. Those soldiers weren't messing around. Probably didn't hurt you either. I did not know you were a master of a sword, Bick. Where did you learn such powerful techniques? What are you doing here? Why didn't you run when you had the chance? And more importantly, why did he save us? You know, this Tokyo has taught me a little something. You don't need a reason to help others. That's everything's touch for you. A true warrior of compassion. Thank you, Julie, for letting us your blade. We're here to rescue a friend of ours. You think you could give us a hand? Hmm, a friend. I see. So when you see you again? It must be nice to have something like that. Rick starts flashback to the chance of being one rainy night in Jinjuku Central Park. Small slap flashes his lips before he turns back to cheer in Moritaka. Yeah. Okay, you've got yourself the virus, Spart. I'm as much of a soldier as any of these goons. Moritaka, right? You'll take point, Shiro. You're watching our backs. Let's roll out! Whoa! Not long after you were ejected from the Scally Pokemon Wars, the War Mongo troops stormed the fine range. <sighs> My head's spinning. After spending so long trapped inside the mirror network, your friends are no in no state to fight. Currently, the enemy soldier is being held off by Jacob, who has taken advantage of the narrow entrance to solve their advance. I see. Low range beams. How was your arm? Are you able to move it yet? Sorry. I think I'm out of this fight. Double Dragon really didn't number on me. Can't summon the little salmon either. Behind you! Watch out! With all your comp capable allies busy defending the doorway, no one's off to stop the Hawking Trans team from coming close to you. Good. Ah, uh, no. Harrison! That's Yori, do you mean? Before anything else, I have one quest I must make of you. What's up? You. You claimed your goal was bringing an end to the cycle of war that can soon Tokyo. Yes, I did. Do you truly believe if such a thing is possible, that you can succeed where all others have failed? Of course I do. I wouldn't have said otherwise. Then show me your resolve. You have strength you claim? Prove it to me! My... resolve? Are you saying what you th I think you're saying? If the loss of one hand will prevent you from defeating a lowly soldier, then these grand claims of yours are nothing but empty words. I am Sergeant Yasuyori Uruta. 
Warden of the Warmongers and Sworn Soldier of Command Tuskalipoka. If you would take arms against my liege lord, my duty compels me to stand in your way. Draw your blade. We will measure your worth here and now. Ugh, this is gonna hurt. Wait, wait, my friends. I beg you, do not start this battle without me. Uh, no way. I definitely do not know that voice. <laughs> wait, is that Musashi? Wait, who is this? Who is this? I can't. Is that Mitaka? Yeah, of course it's Mitaka, I think. Maybe. Thank you for waiting! It seems I've arrived just in the nick of time, as they say. <laughs> Hear ye, villain! My Dr. Shimuzuka of the Dog Rises come to his aid! So cool! Another of the eight? Then it would be imprudent not to announce myself. Nice ass. I am Asuyori Kobungo Inuta, one of the eight Dog Warriors and bear of the Orb of Brotherhood. Let me pop him. Moritaka's and Yasuyori's breastmark blaze brighter than you have ever seen. A piercing hum fills the air as their herbs resonate. Woo, let's go! Beach the music. And the, the waves are awaited. You too are a duck warrior? In other words, draw your blade, filial warrior, and face me. The town of Shemo claims they have already met in past loops. Uh, to Yasuyori, this is the first and fateful encounter. <laughs> I can't. Go on. I'm... Don't die. I'm your feet, soldier. And it's been a long turn. But we have a rebellion to crush. I see all four leaders. Priest, an android, and a human from Squad 26 called Arison. What? Then... This must be Patechi Academy. Surrounded by mobsters who seem to have mistaken him for one of their own. <laughs> Shalala tries to conceal his surprise. Wait. Mr. Ackerman ordered me to deliver the dish he got from the agents to the summoners. This is my chance. But we got together to Arthur, and quickly! Shalala sprints panting to Pent Penitentiary Academy. The scroll he was given weighs heavily in his pocket. Okay, so we're finally understanding what exactly is going on with Mr. Shalala. He was given the last to deliver something to the summoners. What it is? Maybe it's uh, related to Hakuman's sort of a spiel about uh, the goddess in her, in her first, first leash. Uh, Tweak and Rend, Hatton. Give me those three stones. Unforgettable Future 3. No! No more guitar team. Shalotl has been charged with a mission of the highest importance and secrecy. To deliver intelligence gathered by the agents at the behest of the tycoons, to the Guildmaster of the Summoners. We could have sworn the agents dissolved, but... Mm, well, it's glad that it seems like we are in alliance with them uh, via Tadotomo. That information is stored in Tadotomo's scroll, the sacred artifact currently inside Shalala's pocket. We do not have, like, used... Well, I see has several scrolls visible. This is the best way I can think of to ensure our intel can avoid the invader's memory tampering. Oh. Ensure that reaches my lord intact. The resonance that forced me part was the scroll for the time being. But as long as I still have my orb of loyalty sacred for effect, it should prove no issue. The agents have big danger uh, to obtain the information now making its way to Potentia. Information about the eight dog warriors, events in Eldrados and Shalotl's departure, and much worse. El Dorado, Shalala's homeworld, is a land abundant with gold blessed with fertile soul. Its inhabitants worship the sun above, and they offer it a steady stream of living sacrifices so that it continues to shine. If Tuscatli Poka had, have, had had his way, things would have continued unchanged forever. However, there is one who did not accept the system of sacrifice. Tuscatli Poka could not ignore the source of descent because the long summoned very dear to him. 
It was his brother, Quetzalcoatl. But it's hard to say where this going began. Was it perhaps with Shalotl's tears as he fled sobbing from his duty? Or was it perhaps because the love Quetzalcoatl's Nahuatl for Maya Huel had changed something in him? To act also for Maya Huel. I don't know who Maya Okay, this is a bit confusing, but I'm sure it's going to do actual work. Whatever the cause, the result remains the same. After the light of the transient took Shalotl from El Dorado, Scali and Quetzalcoatl flashed in the most wet and where their land had ever known. When the dust settled, the Scali Poco and a system of sacrifice victorious. Quetzalcoatl was defeated and banished from El Dorado. However, there is more to the story. In the moments before his exile, Quetzalcoatl did the unthinkable. With his sacred artifact, he erased all the traces of his existence from the land. His rule made manifest the destructive forces of Aldrado. Perhaps its scorching wildfires, or perhaps its strange droughts. Quetzalcoatl's golden temple disappeared, and a lush jungle withered away to arid wastes. Ooh. He vanished from the eternally unchanging world of Eldorado, taking with him all evidence of his charms and every offering of gold made to him. But there is one connection that he could never erase. Even now, Scatly Folk could not forget the look his brother's eyes, for long ago he once felt the same motion. Listen up, amigos! Remember, we are to Scatly Folk's honor guard! It is our honor to fight and die for our soul magnificent. Viva to Scatly Folk! We may fall, but our super estrella is eternal. Carve your names into history, my brothers. Die gloriously, and the crowd will cheer your name for all time. Viva Tuscali Fuka! Viva Tuscali Fuka! Within the confines of Penitentia Academy, Tuscali Fuka's handpicked honor guard is known as the Black Spiders. Their deadly coordination invite their foes to their doom like the spider's legs guiding its spray to the center of its web. These Lucial losers are all covering each other. I can't get a good hit anyway. Nice pun, Suzuka. Until now, Suzuka and Tetsuya have been making good progress through the prison. But after an ambush by the Black Spiders, the situation is getting worse by the second. <laughs> We're gonna have to make a break for it. See the corridor over there? Damn it. Fine. So long, you creeps. We'll clean you up later. Engraved my name of Moritaka Shiro Inuzuka unto thee, Blade of Ice! Soko! The rule of the Moritaka sword constantly exuded a billowing white mist that cleanses all impurity. Now the blade's cloudy light flares all the brighter, empowered by his eye. The Erdrix will not avail you! Doskoi! Yes, he already lifts one of his legs high like the Tomb Wrestler, then drops it with an earth shattering crash. That was magnitude 5 at least. Did a sacred artifact do that? Wait, something else is going on. Mm, my best! It's fading away! The short sword strapped Yasuori's eyes shines with the light of a rule, and the mist disperses. Moritaka blinks in surprise as his trump card is instantly nullified. Yes, you already took his chance. Take this! Duskoi! The soldier slams his legs down again and again. The entire roof shakes with each mighty stomp. The unexpected earthly catches Moritaka off guard. He staggers, and yes, he doesn't hesitate to follow through. He flies into Moritaka like a battering ram. And the small Arthurian flies backwards like a leaf in the gale. Watch out! He's strong! <laughs> I am sorry to have shamed myself so Arthur. Well, Commander has given me an order, and I swear I'll see it done! 
Yasuo has come to a realization. This commander never explicitly ordered him to defeat his enemies. Scout Ipoko's command to the letter was this. Prove a shining example of our ideals. And the defined virtue of Penitentiary Academy is not strength, it is self-sacrifice. In short, his orders are to demonstrate that to his subordinates by any means necessary. Ugh! Yes, you already fights with desperate strength of someone prepared to die for their beliefs, and his fanaticism is infectious. This ain't time to be lashing around. The wardens are out there fighting for us. We swore we'd have each other's back no matter what, and I'm gonna damn well be keep my promise. All right, let's give them hell. We got com comrades to save. God, I love this music. This one's for our friends! Charge! Oh, for the love. Don't any of you idiots care what you're doing to your bodies. Just take a nap until you cool off. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's four more down, but they just keep coming. The number of soldiers trying to force their way into the fighting range is growing by the second. Jacob, Chenong, and an R-19 have managed to hold them off so far, but the warmongers' overwhelming numbers are taking their toll. <laughs> Bolstered by the arrival of reinforcements, yes, Yori's attacks become reckless, more reckless than ever. This is looking bad. I'm not sure if we can hold out. This might be it. Twisted Bastion! Two enormous trees are up from the ground in front of you, cutting off the warmongers' advance. The trees curl around each other almost longingly as they grow, intertwining so tightly that they form an impenetrable barricade. Oh, you're right, Katzel! I mean, Harrison. Shlotl, what are you doing here? I've been looking all over you. Mr. Sockman ordered me to give you something. It's really important. Hawkman sent you here? I'm not sure I'm following. Mm, right, um, Mr. Hawkman believes you'll need memories to help you boost, beat the silly polka. I'm his brother after all. So she sent me to find you. But I got mistaken for a security guard, and then for the marmoters, and then... Uh, anyway, that's a long story, but I did it. I found you! Mr. Sockman will be pleased with me. Right? <laughs> this takes me back. <clears throat> the agents have been hard at work gathering data on that dog we're here, brother. Uh, let's see. Ah, here it is. Shalala reads off everything written on the scroll concerning Yasuo's short sword with an artifact. The blade is set to scatter the leaves from the surrounding trees with each swing and to have the power to spell energy gather to an object. Okay, they're just an alpha. I don't remember that in this game, but sure. Of course! That must be how you countered my rules list. Uh, it's just a mess. But I get. I bet he's causing those earthquakes by releasing energy from inside the earth. He's using the power of the earth. Then, what if I suffered his control? Would that help? Ain't no sticking tree's gonna get an arrow it. We'll smash him to wood chips. Ah! The warmongers tried to break through, but thanks to the protection of the wind, Shalato's trees remain steadfast and unmoving. Beware! These are no ordinary trees. They are safeguarded by some kind of rule. That's right. My trees will budge an inch what, what, whatever you do. So go ahead. Punch them all you like. You'll never get through. Hmm, perhaps not, but we have no need to. If you insist on hiding yourselves away, I will crush our refuge along with you. Doskoi! 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 With each thunderous impact, Shalato's trees tremble, and clouds of leaves flutter down from the high branches. The shaking becomes stronger and stronger, yet Siri continues to stomp and cracks start to appear in the walls and ceiling. 
<laughs> Please don't! You're going to bury us all! Tyler turns the scroll to the special idol sands and rolls across the floor until it stops at a certain transient seat. Huh? Is this what I think it is? Uh, yes, Yori, you've got to stop. You're going to bury us all alive. Then I will have done my duty. You've got to be kidding me. What are you thinking? Are you trying to take us with you? The soldiers of the warmongers do not cower in the face of death. We are glad to give our lives for a cause. I fight not for myself, but to set an example for those to follow me. As you will now see. We're gonna be buried alive. I didn't sign up for this. Well, we'll come back right after, right? I'm not gonna die for real, right? Even common soldiers know that events within battle zones don't rewind until battle zone is dispelled. And they can deduce that if no one were to find them under the rubble to dispel the battle zone, they would stay dead. A ripple of this white runs through the war mongs ranks. Until now, it was never questioned that they would be revived. Ugh. And you are not prepared to face your end. Now is the time for him. Some soldiers take the Asuri's word and flee. Others gulp and watch from a distance apprehensively. Uh, this is getting worrisome. Check the plaster rain from the ceiling. At this rate, the next tremor is all certainly to bury you all. Shalala, it's okay. You can get rid of the chase. <clears throat> what about? If you say so. You and Morishaka step forward, leaving the protection of Shalado's sacred artifact. Yasuyori, I need to ask you something. Why are you doing this? I've already made my answer plain. I fight for my comrades, for my fellow students of Penitentiary Academy. Are you sure? Is that really true? Of course. What cause have I to lie? I have long since given up hope of stopping this cycle of war. My only desire is to die a warrior's death. I have a sworn fealty to my commander. To give my life for him is an honor, nay, my duty. Note this, Yasuri Inja. I have never seen so true a warrior as you. Maritaka. If the essence of the warrior's way is to find a cause worth dying for, the word your hand has ever held a blade. I am certain I would still believe that had a dear friend not given his life to teach me an important lesson. And who is this dear friend? Hmm. Moritaka recalls the day he watched a warrior who could have been his dub double while on the battlefield. That warrior passed on with joy in his heart and wonder on his lips from the peace he had found in Tokyo. He had dreamed of the day the endless cycle of war might be broken, and he gave up his own chance to watch that dream come true to spur his disciples onward. In that moment, Moritaka swore that he would not let that warrior's death be in vain. He would walk the same path, even if he could only advance it a little further, in search of our deep horizon. Even if the great flood of time should wash Tokyo clean once more, and the day should come that they were united, they would both be different iterations of themselves with different minds, different memories, different hearts. Upholding his mentor's dying wish is a duty that only this Moritaka Inuzuka can shoulder. You are very much mistaken if you believe the only one who would win this war is Arden. You dare preach any this war when you cannot even stop one lowly soldier? If you doubt our strength, we shall prove it. You will not find us lacking. I am Moritaka Inuzuka. And my blade will wake from this nightmare! The so called I'm with you, Moridaka. You and Mori talk to charge yes, sorry, with your weapons, please to strike. Whoa! Where are you? Arthur! 
Wait. Sword. The light. It can't be. I know that light. It's got to walk rule. rule. Father. Mother. Siblings. I beg you. Lend me your strength. No, I'm blocked by my. Oh yeah, my arm's broken. <laughs> um, I know that you can remove buffs. I... Oh no, he doesn't have a new skill illusion. Poop. Uh, Chilotl. regeneration, tenacity, evasion, attack itself. Attack itself. This is probably scripted an easy twin. I don't know what I'm fretting about. Uh, anyway. Oops. Attack oneself. It would probably be better if I move as. Let's go to the back here. Oh my god, stop sucking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I might actually lose. <laughs> um... How does this go walk fast? Okay. That's never coming off. <laughs> and uh, remove buff from target. Okay, it's not gonna remove any debuff. There you go. As Yamori Tako bear down on him, this Yori considers just what this guy Poki truly deserves from him. This commander had once claimed that a loss that could be Riku would not be suffice, that a true sacrifice should be permanent. In which case, the most permanent loss would be to make for the greatest offering. Only by sacrificing himself eternally, irreversibly, can he serve as an example of the true meaning of obedience. A brief soldier in Penitentiary Academy watches with bated breath as Yasuori prepares to make his last greatest and greatest sacrifice. Oh, the mirror's back up. His leg is already raised. Once he slams it back down onto the floor, it will all be over. He will release his rule into the ground, the ceiling will fall in, and rubble will be all that remains to mark their graves. For the use load by your injuries, Raytaka is a few steps ahead and is the first to strike. Petal slaughter and leaves fall. Life is very fleeting. Blade of falling leaves! Doskoi! The short sword of Yasuori's waist flares in. When he talks, the ruler loses its hour. And the mist around his blade fades. Soko! But Moritaka casts aside his blade and barrels into Yasuori. Biting and gnawing at him with canine fury. Whoa, that's pretty feral. In an instinctive reaction to pain, Yasuori desperately tries to rip Moritaka away from him aside. Moritaka hangs on for dear life. Yasuori gives up and starts bringing, to bring his foot down with Moritaka still clinging to him. Damn it, I'm not gonna make it. Just a bit further. Yasuori plummets inexorably towards the ground just beyond your reach. There seems to be nothing you can do to stop it. Mm. 
<laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's right. He has their secret artifacts. He can do that. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Scroll Inferno. It cannot be. The War of Loyalty is here. Thus, Yuri cries out surprise. He knows this secret artifact, and Tanatoma has assured him that its owner is far across the ocean. Hey, that's the scroll Tanatoma gave me. Wait, it was just in my pocket. I'm gonna get over there. Yastri's memories of previous moves betray him. Knowledge brings recognition. Recognition brings surprise. And surprise brings an incentive of carelessness. Rule of the dragon. Rule of rendering. Take this. Bound to steal. One of your arms dangles uselessly, but you only need one hand to wield a sword. Your blade slashes through Yastri, serving on his flesh, but a sacred artifact smashes into the earth. <laughs> a split second later, his sub strikes the ground, producing a mighty thud, and nothing else. For now, Penitentiary Academy still stands strong. Those are some pretty important intel. Thank you, agents. Did you see that? He stopped the sergeant! We're saved! Wait, why am I happy? Why can't I stop shaking? Are these tears? The warmongers may only be now be recalling the fear of a true final end, but their bodies have never forgotten. Magnificent. Yasuyori can feel the atmosphere among his subordinates has changed. He wonders if he has succeeded in becoming the exemplar of beings and his commander wanted. And he wonders if it matters now that his power is spent. Victory is yours. I ask only that you finish me off, as is your right, and grant this foolish soldier the death he deserves. You know what you must do, Arthur. Cut him by the neck. What? What is this, Arthur? Yes, your eyes are wider in surprise. But they soften again as he becomes aware of the steady beating of your heart. Such gentle warmth. I feel the heat of the blood flowing through your body. He wraps his own shaky arms around you and realizes that his own heart's pounding fiercely. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Yasuyori's voice trembles, tears pour from his eyes. His entire body screamed its love for being alive. And for the first time, he wonders if he is really nothing more than a monster, and motion is a killing machine. For so long, he believed so. Oh, here comes the floating picture. But now he cannot deny a desire to live, which now burns somewhere deep inside of him. Nor can he deny his relief at seeing some of his comrades escape. Or at finding that the rest are unharmed. Just as his old friend Sumon Yoyogi had many different versions of themselves within them, so does he. Once he may have believed that there was no place for him outside of penitential walls, but no more. With all before as my witness, I admit defeat. Thanks for informing, General. I suppose it was only a matter of time before the other warring mongers moved against us. Indeed, I can set events here into motion whenever I please. Farewell, and may fortune favor you on your mission. The scout leap ends skulls and collapses into an executive chair, deep in thought. They read the tides of war well. I should have expected as much from a group calling themselves warmongers. However, it seems I am still one step ahead. The Scali Pokemon now splits into broad grin as he watches his other half do battle through the security feed. The light is the light of Katalkawaddle's power! 
the light to which my brother severed the land itself. If my other half has reclaimed that power, the time has finally come to continue this war. The Scotty Poco raises a mirror high, and it once more becomes a window to the glories of the days long past. You're safe! Thank goodness! You have no idea how weird you've been. In the brief moment of peace that follows your battle, your friends run to you. Ah, it can't be, but... But it is! That was my brother's rule! So Quattle's rule! The render of Earth! Lotto? What's up? Do you know something about... <laughs> what? Alert! An explosive increase in memory transmission volume has been detected with an Eldorado system network. So in other words, the Scotly Puka is attempting to trap us once more in his memories of Tokyo's past. That ain't it. This is something different. These memories aren't from Tokyo. They're from a whole different world. Nothing's... These memories are... Where are we? What the hell is going on? These memories are overriding the world around us. It's just like that time the old school building that I haven't we haven't seen it because they haven't translated it yet. You look around to find yourself very, very far away from him. A uh, dark, dense jungle sprawls as far as you can see. Penitentiary Academy has been overwritten by another world. You now see Eldorado as it once was in Tiscali Poca's memories. The hell? Yes, Yori. Is that you? What are you doing here? Ashigura, I should ask you the same. Your selflessness has been an inspiration to all, Warden Inuta. You have fulfilled your part in our bargain, and now I'll fulfill mine. Do with that creature what you will. The Scotty Pocus gives down at you for a long moment. And now, my friend, my brother, my elder half. At last, the time has come to take up arms once more! Here upon our battlefield, our warriors are born! Lingering Smoke 1 Just after your battle against Yasuyori concluded, our 19 came to you with an important message to relay. Observation, you are all safe. I am relieved. I was concerned about your status. Our 19 is a reconnaissance unit built to recover data from hazardous locations. And the interests of the mission, such units are programmed to seek an individual in the field to serve as their custodian. It is only logical that our 19 should be trying to gain your trust, but concern in the rebel concise is anything but logical. Looks like we both had a rough ride. You don't have to follow me, you know. Sorry I got you involved. Worrying about me is illogical. I am a disposable unit. My directives prioritize my objectives over self-preservation. Come on, man. Don't talk about yourself like that. You're not so well to me. You don't look after yourself. R19 tries to explain the replicants' data storage units are recovered by a suitable authority when they cease to function. But for some reason, the Ruffkin's vocal processing it seems to malfunction. Counter-argument. Your criticisms are irrational. They have no logical basis. Oh dear. You think you made an enemy. I've never seen you get so sulky before, r -Nating. Sulky? Was I sulky? You were indeed. Perhaps you were not aware. In that respect, you are in good company. Only a blessed few are not blind to their own emotions. It is only when we find another who reflect us like a mirror that we finally begin to understand. Analysis failed. Do not comprehend. I request additional explanation. 
I fear these questions are beyond my power to answer. You must find the answers on your own. That is all the guidance I can give you. Before the world of El Dorado was born, it was nothing but the eddies of amniotic energy. And so it remained, until two siblings stood up to oppose the chaos. Their names were Tuscalipoca and Quetzalcoatl. At the end of the raging war, Tuscalipoca sacrificed his right leg for their victory, and the land of El Dorado was born. So it was just the... nothing else, but it was just the... space fluid, I guess. Those who witnessed the end of the battle brought forth a new faith emulating Tuscalipoca's self-sacrifice. With this faith followed by most of El Dorado's inhabitants, this world became one fueled by the offering of lives. Self-sacrifice formed the part of its very foundation. Thus, giving all of oneself was seen as the greatest honor, a mark of excellence. Train, fight, and let the winner offer themselves as a sacrifice to the gods! Wishing forever best sacrifices, Eldrada became a land of never-ending war. I demonstrated my ideals through example. This is why I thrust myself into the fight without a thought to, to despair in. Even now, I, Tezcalipoca, do not regret my decision. I love this world. It contained all the proof that I had lived. I believe from the bottom of my heart that I love El Dorado more than anything. So I hesitated not in my choice to continue fighting. For the sake of this world, I would have done anything. To me, never ending wars are entirely normal. Until the day disappeared from the world. I had never imagined a world without you in it, my other half. I never once stopped to think such a thing might happen. He disappeared, and the only trace of you left was the world itself, which you left to me. All I had ever wanted was to live our eternity in that world, the one with you in it. I wasn't even able to ask you why you left me. I thought my heart had already been lost, until I felt an icy cold wind blow through it. At the time, I could not understand the reason behind it. Surely, I was devastated by your self-sacrifice. Oh. Damn. <laughs> That's not a line I was expecting given how important self-sacrifice was, but that is... I suppose that is how he feels. Counter to all he was working up towards. Commander, though it pains me greatly, I have come to request your blessing. I wish to be dismissed from your service, for I have found a home to return to. It may not pain you. You may do as you please. I have always been of the mind that there is no use in retaining a soldier who lacks morale. The scout he puts his gaze falls to Shalot alone, and he pauses. No, that is not what I meant to say. Gelato there once shared the cult of sacrifice himself, much like you have. My dear other half, Quetzalcoatl, allowed him to leave our world to El Dorado back then. And because of that act, I will allow you to leave my side now. I will follow the path laid out by Quetzalcoatl's deeds. And all that my other half has done, I too will do. In doing so, I will remember everything. And then I'll begin it all over again. An endless year getting loop in the world and the war. Such is my greatest ambition, my truest desire. Understand that this is why I approve your dismissal. The Scotty Poco's tone is loop. Arrogant, but also sincere. Uh Oh, I see. He wishes to relive the history with his 
what his brother against him. I guess better have a vantage point of how to make the war continue. It's a bit contrived, but okay. <laughs> Understood, Commander. I wouldn't expect no less from a noble leader, a soul radiant to Scully Poga. Are you sure about that? I mean, kind of him and the other, uh, like the Black Spider, sort of him some predatory fences for his, uh, softness. Oh! That looks like we're here. The rule makers, us. Special containment unit, Penitentiary Academy. So, this place went to. This is Kali Poke is done for. Ah, I was sad to see a world representative meet such a pet of land. The members of the rulemakers remaining at the portal have been discussing the likely course and effects of the current events. Well, he is not capable of preserving harmony. Perhaps for him, it is merely redress for his mistakes. Hmm, so the attacks on Penitentiary Academy has been approved then. I hear the warmongers have the guild masters hold a vote. They ill? Yes, Michael is currently defying the treaty and bringing angel troops to the academy to confirm this. Well, you know, that's not really defying the treaty if they defied all the previous treaty stuff. Uh... Yeah. What kind of boat? So you say this is the result of the majority vote of the West? Or rather, the world representative. Meaning you've chosen to destroy the world representative, El Dorado. Yes, Bale, though it pains me to admit it. We of the East, as well as those of the South, have chosen to acquiesce to the West's decision. I see. So the crime of breaking out the trees and causing mutual distrust between the three goals was that severe, eh? Indeed. Oh, I see. So even the warmongers is turning against the, the Tuscali Poco now. Well, no, outside of Penitentia. I'm sure Tuscali Poco will be the first to be removed by the royal representatives in many loops to come. <laughs> Did you just speak of loops to come? You all think the same. Do you believe that your world, and yours alone, will continue for all eternity? Ah, uh, Chino Matarasu. All world. And at some point. This, I know better than most. <laughs> Standing in Tokyo Cathedral before the rulemaker's portal, Bale smiles to himself. Wait, wasn't the, the story of... Like, uh, canon also important to the main quest. Well, I'll never know about that since that's not translated yet. <laughs> Penelope stands in the dense, overgrown jungle, and as speaks, stands to Sky Poka, awash with a black light. And it is a light so bright as to be the sun of an entire world. Hear me, soldiers, my beloved servants of war. Set a flame your flesh to light a world. Let your pride burn bright. Lit by the glow, the jungle trees begin to grow, and a dark breath whispers on wind with a living pulse more them. Very interesting there. Ugh, I can't see like this. It's everything all right. Uh, what's going on? Mm. You got enemies inbound. Whoever they are, they're used to killing. I can smell it on them. Oh no! Doors, tres, battle, and. Cinco! Warriors appear from the jungle within the lighted smiles and voices full of unbridled glee. 
Viva El Dorado, senors! Come to Ino Ilores for Tascali Pocos, honored artist here. Alegrar sus corazones. Well, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing any of these correctly. <laughs> Onward, warriors of El Dorado. Show them the strength of our lucha libre. The Scali Pucos guards begin to blend into the surrounding shadows, their hearts being as one in time with jungle. Yeah. <laughs> From young trees, you can hear the cries of fierce struggle. Everyone! Where are they? Hombre <laughs> Tigre! With one of your hands out of commission, you only narrowly managed to parry Ombre Tigre's blow with your sword. Ha <laughs> ha Nice work, amigo! But how about this? Let the sky, flames of my heart, burn stronger! Climb higher! Ombre the Tigre begins to unravel his costume. Bands of rubber rigging and those up between trees. Crouching Tiger Living Jaguar! Amigo! Omri Tigre uses the rubber-like ropes of the wrestling ring, springing from them to aim an aerial attack straight at you. I can't sense him. Where is he going to come from? But then Omri Tigre's chest beats part of smoke given to him by Scali Puka. Here, within the jungle, which in itself is a part of Scali Puka, but renders him virtually untackable. Omri Tigre is a hunter playing with its prey, lurking in the shadows of the jungle for the right time to pounce. Uh, hair? Yeah! Swing your sword, but with one arm paralyzed and painful, your attack is weak and easily avoided. And the follow up! Moonsoft Press! La Cabrata! Ori Tigre turns away from your, you before jumping to the air, executing a backflip and landing on you with full force. Only a stellar move! <laughs> the skill dice! Get up, amigo! The fight has only begun! Umbre Tigre urges you up with a blinding smile. Why don't you fence me off? Why would I kill you? I'm a luchador. In lucha libre, there's no point if the audience isn't having fun. All I want is for the fight to be enjoyable. Enjoyable? I don't see anyone having fun here. Hmm, I'll do that speak again. Me amigo, haven't you ever wanted to be just like the super who protects the world? Our Super Estrell is called to action when the world is in place to sacrifice himself for the greater good. Solidarity, noble, and strong. Shedding with all as much, never showing an ounce of anger or contempt. I wanted to be like him. It wasn't a dream someone had forced on me. I wanted it myself. I thought I could send me inside him. I thought I could feel that aching loneliness. It turned out to be impossible for me, but at the very least, I wanted to follow the desire. So, I will burn this body to ash on the battlefield. I'll show him how bright my flame can shine! Retake you. Do you mean this Catlapoca? Well, I wouldn't mind seeing some of your flame. I dedicated my heart to him. I have no regrets. If he were here to wish it, I would devote the rest of my body to him as well. Slow it down a bit. Your body's your own property, you battle crazed boon. <laughs> Ombre Tigre just barely dodges when Shang springs an attack on him from behind. Then Ombre Tigre lands back into the surrounding jungle. Ugh, are you ready, Arthur? Thanks. That sort of your shines like a beacon. I could find it anywhere. More importantly, that arm of yours looks paralyzed. Can you move it? I don't diagnose the problem with your arm in a single glance. Show him. I need your health. I need a painkiller. And maybe a bit of fashion. <laughs> uh, what is it with all my patience? Alright, fine. But after this, you're getting a real earful. Count it. You'd better be ready. Come on now. Hold out your arm.
For a moment, everyone stops breathing, lying in wait in the shadows of the forest for you to recover. After all, that will make the battle that much more fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not to mention, Scotty Poco would be doubtless, uh, would doubtless be disappointed if his chosen foe were all here. Alright, bring it over. Let's do this. Firmly grasp it! I only brought you for the FP shine, you know that, right? Oh no! <laughs> I hope you're not No! <laughs> Holy crap! That's a bit too close. Okay. Oh no! No! What happened to your CP? What are you doing? Kotaro, you just said your charge. Fucking stupid ass. Right, you know what? You, you go distract him over there. Bye. That was very telling. Harder, faster, stronger. My heart will reach the sun. May this battle at least create a diversion from his loneliness. Again, Ombri Theory blends into the shadow of the jungle, only to reappear bouncing all around you under rubber roads. Alright, sever the darkness! Sever the sled! Balance tail! <laughs> Your rule of rending severs the darkness of the jungle from the ground to which it is attached. Impossible! The shadows are dissolved from the jungle, and trees breathing stills. Umbria Tigre remembers back to when he saw a battle between the two suns. He remembers the brilliance of the Scotty Poke's opponent, able to sever the very earth. And she remembers the joy with which the Scotty Poke fought at the very end. Blech. Well, go on! No doubt, he waits for you. Umbria, go! After defeating Obri Tigre, Chenong lets you go onward. I know you're there, Yasuri. Come on out. Dr. Shenong. Remember how you owe me for those sleeping pets. Well, I'm calling in the favor. You would ask me to turn on a commander. I fear I swore him my loyalty. Well, don't worry, because your orb of... Uh, Hakenji is actually related to brotherhood, not loyalty. That's not what I'm asking. I just figured we'd grant that masochist wish. To do that, I'll need your help. And your rule. My rule? Run through the jungle as it rots away, start from the life that once inhabited its trees. Quetzalcoatl, so you've come, my other half. I'm here to 
Exactly, Poker. I'm not the Tel Quadl. I'm sure that's how it feels to you. To me, however. You are my precious other half. That sparkle in your eyes, the way you dash to stop an endless war. I've seen it all before. The scaly poker calls us suddenly, lost in memories of the past as he stares deep into your eyes. Casal Quattle is within you. I see my other half inside you. Let us enjoy a moment's respite, drinking this beautiful state below us. Scaly poker points you where your friends are currently fighting. Just look at them, hurling themselves into harm and for the sake of the war that we so desire. Doesn't this just make you feel alive? How priceless to see life go up in flames. <laughs> I was to provoke you, and yet you still refuse to come at me with your sword. If you defeat me, you may be able to meet that teacher you've been searching for. I see you've learned. I approve. It's proof that you're alive. What you could call my true form exists within a network of countless mirrors. Should you attack me, I could use that network to escape as many times as I pleased. Even if you were to strike me down here where I stand, nothing would come of it. Uh <laughs> Though I suppose I'm not the only one who can say such things. All world representatives are the same, though I would not know how you would feel the matter. In war ravaging Tokyo, this means nothing for world representatives. As foolish as they might be, none are so weak as to be separated from the world by something like death. Unless we are separated from our will to fight, this will never end. Oh boy, <laughs> this runs deep. So, let's have a little chat if you would. Chat. Why are you searching for the man? The one you call your teacher. You mean Mr. Monobe? The scout poker sounds his answer enough. I have spoken with that man at length. I have surmised a few things about you from my observations so far. That actually weren't they like not allowed to talk to them at all? No one was allowed to get near him. So the scout poker's brain rules even then. And that he left without telling you anything. He left you behind. Am I correct? I'll be frank. Do you not feel that man abandoned you? Do you not feel that, in the end, he cared nothing for you? I... You cracked that whip on your already exhausted body, straight to catch up with him, and yet... There's no meaning in your following him. That man had no need of this world's interpretation of eternity. I thought such a thing would be obvious, but I wonder how you truly feel. Even if that's true. But I don't care. I think you're wrong. I want to hear him out. I follow him because I want to. Hmm. Your idiocy truly knows no bounds. It reminds me of that pathetic foolish dog in search of its master. It's simple to realize it's been abandoned. Deeper than Tuscali Poca, holy emotions begin to bloom. Anger and disdain toward another. 